All right, good morning all. So you join me back in the observatory and today uh, we're going to start looking at installing a uh, concrete pier uh, into the observatory. For you that may have noticed on the community post I made a couple of days ago, I did find this uh, 2.67 meter long length of heavy wall 200 millimeter uh, UPVC pipe and I'm planning on using that uh, once it's sunk into the ground and filled with concrete as uh, the pier itself. So the first thing we're going to do is take a quick look inside the dome and uh, what I'm planning on doing in there. Alright so here we are inside the observatory and next to the, the CGXL mount uh, that I've got the RASA 11 sitting on and on the floor the blue surface you can see this was a temporary uh, old piece of uh, swimming pool liner uh, that I'd had uh, used as a, a flooring just temporarily until I decide what I'm wanting to do in here uh, permanently. Uh, so I just used that just now, it just helps to keep a little bit of the dust uh, coming up through the bottom of the observatory and obviously helps to minimise any breezes in that uh, inside. And I've already, uh, when I first installed uh, the dome and set up the CGXL in here, I dropped a plumb line from the, the centre of the, uh, the dome and I was on the floor here you can see I've got this mark uh, and I've got an actual hole drilled through the center of the base uh, with this uh, hex key uh, just shoved through the hole there just so I can see from underneath as well uh, where the center uh, of the, the dome is and the, and the dome pad. So what I plan to do is once I've uh, finished digging the hole uh, and I'll then I'll have to look at removing uh, the CGX out of the observatory I'll lift this floor and then I'll cut uh, an oversized hole uh, to allow me to get to the, the section of uh, plastic piping which I'll probably have to take in uh, through the shutter and then lower it down into position and then uh, square it up so it's uh, sitting vertically. Now with the dome itself, or sorry with the pier itself, I do have this uh, badder uh, short pier adapter. So this is an adapter plate uh, that goes on to the, the CGXL uh, mount head. Uh, it also has this universal ring and then we've got this metal uh, short pier uh, extension. And then this allows me to just uh, stick that in place and then I can get uh, positioning so even if the polar alignment is slightly out uh, I, can, uh, and I can adjust this uh, before finalising the position and bolting everything down and then it leaves the uh, the fine tweaking uh, for poor alignment uh, on the mount itself. So what I've done is I've, I've measured uh, from the bottom of the CGX plate, uh, so where this will go on to uh, the, the pier adapter, and I measured the height uh, from this uh, pier short pier adapter, which will sit around at that position, and then measured that down to know how deep uh, I need to go and with that 2.6 meter, 7 meter, uh, sorry, 2.67 meter length of pipe I've got, uh, I should be able to install that without having to cut it at all uh, and get it as deep into the ground as I can for the length I have. Now uh, this also means that if I decide to change things in the future, what I can also I can do is remove this or change the pier head, and uh, we can make uh, compensation height adjustments uh, at a later date, either by uh, building a concrete mold or something like that. Uh, or even uh, a different pier uh, adapter. What I've also decided to do is at the moment the CGXL sits um, offset in the dome um, so that the, the deck and RA axis are actually over the centre point of, of the deck plate and I'm planning on putting the, the pipe uh, centre in the dome uh, so that if I do change the mount in the future which I'm thinking of doing maybe next year uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll adjust for uh, any uh, mount changes. Um, if I do change the mount in the future, I'll probably go for a centre balance mount. Uh, that way, it'll be sit uh, central in the um, in the observatory. And once the pier plates, or sorry, once the pier's in place, I could also potentially move this back and forth uh, to account for some of the offset, just depending on how much uh, space I've got on the top of the, the pier head. All right, so that's it. So let's head down uh, under the dome, uh, sorry, under the, the decking and just see exactly what I'm planning on doing down there.
All right, so here we are underneath the observatory. We've got the quite uh, sturdy decking that I built. Uh, but even regardless how strong this deck actually is, even the, the small movements in the, uh, the dome when it slews uh, can be picked up uh, on the guiding uh, on uh, PhD2. So that was one of the main reasons, even though I do a lot of my uh, observatory re-imaging re um, remotely, uh, when I'm inside the dome, messing around, tinkering, having to, to deal with that movement uh, is a bit of a pain. So here we are, as I say, underneath the, the decking, we've got about a meter's clearance uh, to the deck uh, in height. And along these joists uh, that you can see here, I've actually got a 12 inch box section uh, where the center of the, the the deck is and I plan to as I say cut a hole uh, an oversized hole there to fit the pipe through but one of the things I'm gonna have to do is remove this uh, center spar that they've used just to to bridge across the the length of the pier support legs and then also this footing plate uh, that we've got here I'm planning and just uh, cutting down here and taking this section because it does overlap slightly uh, with the um, the pier hole then I'll cut the, the, the fabric on the deck, so I've got weed control fabric uh, sitting under all the footings and underneath the web control fabric I've also got some uh, PVC sheeting uh, just to also help uh, keep moisture uh, back and uh, keep the weeds from growing up. Uh, so what I plan to do is once I've removed this I'll just cut a square out and fold it back that will allow me to gain access to the soil and then once everything's in place and the concrete's poured, I'll sort out all the sheeting uh, afterwards uh, and reseal things back up again. Uh, in terms of the depth, uh, from the calculations I've done, I'll be down to almost a metre uh, in vertical depth. And here in Cyprus, obviously, it's a warm climate in the eastern Mediterranean, uh, so we don't really have to, to worry about frost. Uh, I don't think uh, in my time that I've lived here uh, over the last five years that uh, we've had frost, frost at all uh, down at the altitude we are next to the south coast of, uh, of Cyprus here. So I'll probably get away with you know, uh, 80 to 800 to 1000 millimetres in depth. So we'll just see how it goes. The ground we're on is soil, uh, however uh, it is extremely hard, it's obviously been baked in the sun for many years and uh, I've got no idea what it's going to be like once I get down in the depths and uh, if there's any stones and things that uh, are down there uh, that have yet to be uh, yet to be discovered. At least in this area of the gardening we know there's no utilities I have to worry about, there's nothing like that uh, so it should be just a straightforward uh, dig. So given the limited access uh, what I plan to do is after I've cut everything I've got my my small uh, shovel and I'll hopefully be able to pick away at the soil. I've also got my nice little uh, fork and scraper that I can uh, chew away at the soil and also I've got this old um, wood flat bit which is actually bent slightly uh, so I don't mind sacrificing that and I can use that just to churn up the soil given the restricted movement under here and not being able to get any um, heavy, tool, heavy tools in there. All right, so it's time to get going. The first thing we're gonna do is cut this post. All right, so post is removed, the crossbar, the footing's been cut back, the weed control fabric and the moisture barrier, they've been cut, exposing the soil. So now it's just a case Start digging holes and see how deep and wide I go. So let's get to it. It's a bit warm today though. It's about 27 degrees here. All right, speak to you soon. All right, so we're about half an hour into digging and so far the hole is round about 30 centimetres square and a depth of round about 40 millimetres so making good progress so far. The uh, spade bit in the end of the drill is working wonders although it started to chew up my uh, my uh, hand a little bit here just the way I'm having to hold it so I've got, got myself a pair of gloves out of the shed and uh, I plan just to keep digging down the square hole first until I get down as deep as I can get and then I'll slowly underpin the hole 
uh, to try and make a pyramid shape hole so that the concrete can seep into and take a bite in under the soil. So we'll just keep going, see how long the battery lasts on this drill. I've got another one on charge anyway. And uh, the hole's big enough that I can work the drill, no problem in there. But the first thing I'm going to do is go and take a drink because I'm melting. All right, catch you in a bit. All right, so uh, I've completely lost track of time, so I don't know how far in we are. I've, I've hit a different layer of soil, so we've hit an extremely hard uh, depth of roughly 60 centimetres. So I've uh, cleared out the hole, uh, enlarged it slightly towards me uh, as I was running off centre. So we're now sitting roughly 35 centimetre square. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep trying to see how hard through I can get this new soil layer and uh, we'll take it from there. Things are progressing well so far. If I can't get any deeper then I'll start to undermine the hole and open it out into the pyramid shape. All right, catch you in to struggle to with the depth. Arm's not long enough. So what I'm planning on doing now, I've flattened out the bottom of the hole and we're sitting at a depth just over 82 centimetres and the hole is pretty square, around about 36 centimetres square. So what I'm planning to do now is I'll start to undermine about halfway down and just get the hole to be a bit of a pyramid shape and that'll help uh, give a bit more mass near the bottom of the hole and lock the concrete into the soil. All right. So the whole bottom of the hole's been flattened off. And I've underpinned the hole slightly just to make a more pyramid shape. And the last thing I want to do before I uh, say the hole's complete is I've got this bolt on a bit of string. And I just want to confirm that my box section that I mentioned earlier in the video, that all the four corners for that are sitting within the hole, or if I need to shave off, shave off the hole anyway, just to, just to finish it off. So as long as it's close, it doesn't have to be perfect, because obviously we're putting in a cylindrical pipe. First corner's looking fine. Second corner's looking okay. Third corner, perfect. And the fourth corner is also looking fine. So as far as I'm concerned, no more digging. I'm poop. Excellent. Next step is to cut the hole in the decking. But I think I need a break first. All right, so we're back in the dome. So here's the center of the dome. I've pulled the the, um, the old bit of swimming pool liner flooring out of the way. I've just rolled it and managed to shimmy it out from underneath the tripod and I've shimmied the tripod out of the way. So the next thing I need to do is to cut a hole for the pipe. Uh, so I'm going to mark on the floor and the pipe itself, 200 millimeters uh, external diameter, and I want to give myself about a centimeter clearance. All right. Okay. So now I just need to cut it out. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a jigsaw here in Cyprus. Never needed to buy one, so I'm not going to buy one just to do this. I attempt to cut it with this, and if that doesn't work, well, I'll have to do it the messy way and just hack it out until I get down to the size I need. So here we go, wrecking the floor. Excellent, it's reasonably round. All right, next up is to open the shutter and see if we can get the pipe in. So I'll hop onto it. Nina, connect the dome, film's connected, shutter's connected, and open. Please work. There we go. Alright, now we'll slew the dome round to the side that I'm working, so I need to rotate it uh, 170 degrees, roughly. Excellent, so now let's get the pipe and shove it through the shutter. There we go. So that's not bad when it sits there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I've got some of these L brackets which I'm going to use just to 
to hold it in place while I uh, do the concrete pour. So temporary brackets in place. Looking not too bad. And it's good enough. Hello. Okay, so we're making good progress so far. Next step is to go to the DIY shop and get some premix concrete. All right, so good morning all, it's two days later. So this morning I got up and I've been down to the shop for the first batch of uh, ready mix concrete. I'll crack on with it and see how we get going. So I've checked this morning, everything's still sitting uh, vertical and, and uh, perpendicular to the deck. So everything's looking good. So it's time to uh, get hot and sweaty again and mix up all this concrete. So I'll catch you in a bit. So where are we now? So I poured the concrete, mixed it up, poured the concrete in the, the footing and uh, I'm just leaving that to, to set now and uh, while that's doing that I've decided that I'm not going to cut this down uh, a few centimetres, I'm just going to leave it as it is and I'll deal with the height uh, on the dew shield and uh, in the meantime what I've done is I've just levelled it off using a file and just worked my way around got it level the best I can, not that it really needs to be, uh, in preparation for doing the filling of the pipe with the concrete. I've also been back to the hardware store and got some uh, steel work for doing the pier head. So here's the short pier head that I mentioned earlier on and I've got three M12 uh, one meter long rods that I've uh, tied together uh, at the bottom with some galvy wire and the intent is that once the uh, once the start or once the pier is filled and uh, I've got it all good to go, I will then pop this in the hole, hammer it into place. Hopefully the concrete will still be wet enough, and I can set this uh, where I want it. So I'll sit roughly round about there, and uh, I've got my. Um, Plumb line, I marked the spot in the centre uh, of the, the dome and I'll hang our plumb line and uh, while I'm just positioning this I'll just uh, drop it into centre uh, until uh, I'm happy the best I can and then we'll just have to uh, leave it to cure so this particular pier head uh, it's the badder short pier uh, 3 M12 bolts uh, holes for, for bolting it into the, hole, uh, into the, the pier and then there's also these three uh, leveling bolts uh, that we can just balance everything out once the concrete's all set and then we'll be able to uh, that's a certain level there and uh, then we'll be able to uh, mount the telescope so i'm just waiting now for the concrete to set so i'll probably do the next pour in the tube uh, tomorrow so we'll catch you later all right so good morning it's the next day again so the overnight the uh, the cement uh, that was poured in the base has continued to uh, to cure overnight. Uh, this morning, when I checked it, the, certainly the surface is absolutely rock solid. But I dare say the core is still uh, still curing. So today, I'm going to start filling up the pier itself with uh, cement, and I've looked out a couple of rods to go down inside as well. And this morning I've already uh, put uh, probably about six to eight inches of uh, gravel uh, down in the bottom of the hole uh, just to set as a base. And uh, I've got a feeling it's going to be an extremely hot day once the sun properly gets up. It's uh, already uh, 33 degrees in the shade this morning, almost 34. 
and it's currently 33 inside the observatory here going by the temperature gauge so we'll see how we got on hopefully uh, I don't run out of uh, bags of cement uh, going by the calts I should have enough but uh, yeah I want to get this all, all done obviously in one pour and uh, the only bit I'm dreading is driving in uh, the spike uh, with the pier head so uh, I've got a four pound club hammer and a block of wood ready to drive that in should I need to but uh, I suppose it depends how well, how well uh, or how I mix uh, the upper layers of the cement to how thick it is. Alright, so I'm going to crack on and we'll see how the day unfolds. So after almost two and a half, maybe three hours, that's the pipe full of concrete. So now I'm just going to put the spear, spear head into the top. I've left about a centimetre clearance just to allow for uh, the volume of the, the uh, rods and uh, once it's all set and everything then I can uh, think about trimming down the pipe should I need to. So if we get spillover it doesn't matter I'll just go on the deck and once it's dry it's easy to clean up. Alright see how this goes. Hopefully we won't have too much drama. I want this end round here. And I've got my marker. There my support. And I've got my washer on a string as a plumb line off my centre mark of the dome onto the centre of the pier head and that looks pretty centre. So that is it. Just give it a shuggle just to make sure that the cement bonds around it pipes and I think that'll do it. So I'll leave that to dry now. Alright, we'll catch you in a bit. Good morning and welcome back to the observatory. So it's now been roughly 42 hours since the last concrete pour was put in the pier and it's uh, been setting obviously since then and it'll probably continue to uh, fully set over the next uh, week or so but it is uh, sounding pretty solid now the top is hard there's no no play there at all which is good so hopefully everything is uh, is bonding as well uh, yesterday uh, it was a bit of a lazy day obviously with this uh, still setting uh, so i did uh, manage to wrestle the uh, the floor covering from underneath the the rasa and uh, I took it out onto the driveway and I uh, cut out uh, the centre patch around where the original mark was <clears throat> and I'm going to use this as a cap uh, between the steel and the concrete I'll just cut uh, holes for the, the three bolts uh, appropriately and then I also cut uh, another uh, probably two three centimetres back uh, from this hole and made a lot of fingers around the uh, the, pl the the covering so that I can put it back over uh, the, the pier and keep it isolated from the deck. So today uh, the plan is to remove this uh, temporary support, it's freed itself off anyway so that'll come out. I'm not going to touch the, the pier head at the moment, I'm going to remove the three temporary brackets that I had just to hold the, the, the plastic pipe uh, in the centre and I'm also going to tear down the rasa and put the floor covering uh, back in so that's the plans for this morning so let's get on with it
All right, so the flooring's back down. The tripod and the CGXL head is out of the dome and the rasa all sitting just outside at the moment. And the next thing I'm going to do is remove the pier head, smooth down the top of the concrete just to get rid of the lumpy bits, and then uh, put this uh, the bit of the floor covering cap as a separation layer. All right. Hopefully everything is bonded enough so this comes off easily enough. Alright, so unfortunately the GoPro died, so I'm back to the phone camera at the moment. So I got to put in a bit of pool liner on top of the concrete, put the pier head back on, and now I'm just going to bolt it down, and I've got my level across the top of the mounting plate for the CGX, and I see how tight I can get this down and level, and I can always fine tune it once I put the, uh, the CGXL head on and see if it moves which it shouldn't all going well. All right, so that's the bolts tightened, nipped up, and I can see that I'm sitting slightly high on the west side. And I just need to use these leveling on that side, and I'm sitting slightly high on the north side. Level, level. All right, so that's the... Uh, your head back on. Next thing to do is attach the CGX. All right, so the CGX mount bolts back in. The CGX I like you should say. So the beauty about this setup as well is that should I need or should I want, I should say go and cart the, the rasa up into the hills, into the dark skies I can easily just unbolt these three hex keys, hex bolts and remove the rasa and put it onto its tripod there we go so once I'm happy when I do the polar alignment, obviously I've got the main adjustments on the mount, but if I'm significantly out, I can just rotate it to the north and then lock the three uh, grub screws uh, in the rotating base. All right, so the next thing is continue to build up the rig. Okay, the first thing I'll do is stick the counterweights back on. So with the Rasa 11, I've been using two 10 kilo counterweights for the balance. I don't know where they were positioned, but never mind. I'm going to get the tool saver it's inside. Rasa. This is never the easy bit. Then the guide camera. Yeah, it was farther forward. So now just to sort out the massive cables again. All right, so here we are. Job's done. I uh, unfortunately I lost some footage from earlier on uh, due to the GoPro uh, that I was using dying, and it seems to have corrupted some files. So I don't know what uh, what I've missed. So uh, anyway, here we are. We're uh, at the end of the project. I've uh, spent this morning putting the flooring back down 
mounting the CGXL onto the pier head, leveling the pier head, and recabling uh, all the uh, the dome. Yeah, sorry, all the the rig, and uh, it's just starting to get dark outside, and uh, that's why we're in here, and we've got the uh, observatory uh, strip lights in, and uh, that was something else uh, that I'd uh, set up just recently. So I've now got uh, voice control uh, over the lights in here. So for example, hey Google, turn observatory inside lights to red. There we go, that's better. And we can also voice control the brightness and things like that, so uh, all good. So, hey Google, turn observatory inside lights to white. Excellent. Uh, I also want to do a, a similar setup uh, around the perimeter of the, the dome pad uh, for the outside rig so when I'm, I'm out there as well I can set them on. So, so let's take a quick closer look at what I've done on the, the, uh, the pier and uh, just see exactly how things have turned out. Alright so excuse me using the phone as I say the GoPro died but uh, we'll, we'll crack on the best we can. So pier was installed a 200 millimeter concrete, uh, sorry, plastic UPVC pipe sunk down into the ground, which is uh, approximately uh, 1.1 meters uh, the ground to the, the bottom of the observatory, and then there's approximately 70, uh, 74, milli uh, 74 centimeters of uh, pipe coming up through the observatory. Then on the top here, we've got the badder short pier head and the CGXL uh, adapter and in the middle joining the two sections is the universal ring and as I said earlier uh, if the footage is there we've got these three grub screws which allow me to rotate uh, the, um, the, the mount uh, if I need to do a rough uh, polar alignment and then obviously tonight uh, once it gets fully darkness I'll, uh, I'll get on to doing a, a proper polar alignment. So there's three M12 bolt heads, one, two, and one round the back, uh, for actually locking the pier uh, into the, the mount head. And then there's the three uh, leveling bolts. Uh, so I spent some time uh, just making sure everything was sitting uh, level uh, in all uh, axes. And then attached the, the mount head, the CGXL, uh, onto that. Uh, then this afternoon, or sorry, this morning, late this morning, Rebuilt the Rasa 11. I've got the guide scope sitting here at the front, which is a, a 60 mil to uh, 80 millimeter focal length guide scope. Unfortunately, I'm still using an ST4 cable at the moment because the CGX and PHD2 hasn't been playing nicely uh, with direct guiding. Uh, however, uh, I'm getting the same guiding accuracy with the ST4, so I'm happy to leave that at the time being. And then at the back of the, the Rasa, I've obviously got the CGXL, and we've also got uh, the spare power cable for plugging in the fan, which is a bit noisy uh, for cooling down uh, the Rasa uh, to get it ambient. And then on top of the Rasa, I have this small uh, webcam, uh, type, uh, tapo, that's it, uh, webcam just for looking out so I can check uh, the position of the, the Rasa relative uh, to the dome slit. At the front, I've got the original Astra Zap uh, dew shield. And uh, as the, the, the scope is now taller, uh, I will need to think about trimming this off uh, to, to, to minimize the risk of collision uh, with the, the shutter box. Uh, I might even you know, just slice it uh, at an angle, uh, just so we've got, uh, we've got clearance there. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it is something I do need to be aware of, and I had a collisions pre previously, even in the lower position. And what I normally do in the the setup is I rotate uh, the scope before opening or closing the shutter. Down in the bottom, obviously, we've got the cables coming off the the guide camera, the main camera, and the power cables. And then uh, on the on the bottom of the pier. I've got a seven hub, uh, sorry, a seven port uh, USB 3 uh, TP Link uh, USB hub, some power cables, and then at the moment I've still got this power brick uh, just running back uh, to the power section in the observatory. And then there's three USBs 
uh, running along the floor. Now I do plan in the future to, to put these under the floor and short out the cabling uh, so that I've got no cabling across the deck. Uh, but I'll be looking at all that as part of a power management upgrade uh, for the uh, observatory. So overall, pretty pleased with it. Uh, around this side, uh, I've got the, the CGX, sorry, the uh, Celestron uh, GPS module just for doing the time and date and position. And uh, that's just uh, cable tied uh, onto one of the uh, leveling bolts. So all nice and neat. Uh, but one thing that I really have noticed already is how much more room uh, it feels like in the observatory not having uh, the, the tripod uh, in the place now. So if we come out to the door and take a step back, we can see I've got my workstations on the left there, the power section, all my equipment and uh, the pier there in the middle. So no tripping over uh, the uh, tripod anymore. So that was the end of uh, a rather um, energetic few days building all this. Um, certainly mixing all the concrete by hand and digging the hole um, in the heat. Uh, you know when it was uh, when I was digging the hole, it was about 27, 28 degrees underneath the observatory. Uh, when I was pouring and mixing all the uh, the concrete to go in the pipe, it was around about 33 degrees uh, in the shade. And uh, inside the observatory, uh, it was around about 35, 36 degrees, if not higher, uh, while I was doing all that. So I was uh, a little bit burnt out by the time I'd, I'd done all that, but uh, really pleased how it's gone. And uh, certainly, you know, everything's rock solid. We'll see how we go. Yes, I could have probably built it differently. Yes, I could have used uh, probably more concrete in the footing. And yes, I could have done it differently, but as usual, there's many ways to do things. And as I've said in, in some of the previous videos, um, this is a rental property that I'm in here in Cyprus. And uh, if I started to go anything more serious with concrete pads and all this sorts of stuff, it's a bit of a nightmare to try and remove everything to return the property back to its original condition uh, if I was to move out. So uh, at least here, uh, it's still relatively easy to destruct. You know, I can uh, just get Jack Hammer through the bottom of the, the, the tube and, uh, you know, just take it away uh, if I need to. But uh, hopefully we won't need to do that uh, for some time. So what's next? Um, I'm probably going to do another pier uh, outside the observatory uh, for uh, the CGX mount that I've got that I use for the solar and for the uh, Edge 11. And I might even build... Uh, a third pier uh, to put my 8 inch Newtonian on or do some combination uh, of the rigs because uh, I've still got uh, an Exos 2 uh, mount uh, that came with the Newtonian uh, but there's a few different things uh, that I'm considering. The other thing I want to do is uh, put power management, more power management into the observatory, be able to switch on all the devices uh, remotely uh, power cycling, all that sorts of stuff. So I'll probably come up with some uh, Arduino, Arduino or Raspberry Pi, so, Raspberry Pi solution uh, for that. And I also want to uh, remove the mains power because uh, all at the moment I've got a big long extension lead that just runs through the bushes uh, back to the house, and uh, I don't particularly like that. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a fire hazard uh, in the dry bushes and things like that. So I want to uh, put a solar panel uh, and battery system into the dome, similar to what I did for the swimming pool pump and water heaters uh, setup that I built, uh, which you can see over on my other YouTube channel, or my, my personal one. And uh, yeah, very pleased. So hopefully uh, I'll get the polar alignment done tonight and uh, we'll call that a wrap. So thank you very much for watching. Obviously, if you have any questions or queries or uh, anything at all, don't forget to uh, put a comment below. If you like this video, hit the like. If you hit the dislike, hit the dislike. And uh, obviously put any comments and things, uh, as I say, below. And if you're not yet uh, subscribed to the channel, please consider do so. Uh, looking at the statistics, there's about 95% uh, of my viewers are uh, still not subscribed. Uh, so plenty of opportunity there for, for growth in the channel. Uh, and any likes and subscriptions and all that sorts of things helps uh, the channel to, to grow and spread further. So thank you for all those that spend the time uh, communicating and uh, 
uh, participating in the discussions and the live streams and things like that. I really do appreciate it. It makes the, the hobby even more enjoyable. And uh, now that we're doing the likes of this uh, project and a few other projects to come, uh, I certainly hope there's uh, more opportunity to d discuss things uh, with more than ever be. So that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, clear skies, everyone. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care now.